My name is Kay Hutchinson. I work for Forest Research. Um, the first thing that I'm going to say is I am not a tree health or plant health scientist. So if it gets to questions at the end, please don't ask me anything too difficult. Um, I'm the project manager for the observatory project. So I haven't got long to speak today, so um, I'm going to give you a very high level overview of exactly what observatory is all about. So the overall objective is to establish an early warning system for tree health using citizen science. And before I explain quite what we mean by that, I'll give you a little bit of background on the partners and the funding. So it is, a, it is a true partnership project. We've got um, ourselves, Forest Research, leading. Um, obviously, we're part of the Forestry Commission. They're heavily involved as well. <coughs> the Woodland Trust, National Trust, and Ferris Science. Um, we all bring different expertise to the party, and we are genuinely, as I say, working very closely together. It's not like Woodland Trust doing one bit and Forest Research are doing the other. It's, it's very integrated working. It's a European funded project, uh, Life Plus funded, 50%, and it's a four year project. We are currently in the middle of year two, um, so we're really finding our feet and getting going with things. Um, and the project is supported by DEFRA, Natural Resources Wales, and AFA as well. I have to get that bit in. <laughs> okay, so observatory, uh, tree health early warning system. Um, You'll all be well aware of the uh, threats facing the UK at this time in terms of um, the, the pests and diseases that are, are looking to arrive here imminently. Um, so the government's strategy on, on plant health has three sort of major parts to it. Keep it out. If you can't keep it out, once it gets here, eradicate it as soon as possible before it spreads. If that's not possible, control it and manage it. Observatory fits in at that second part. If you're going to be able, once it's got here, if you're going to have any chance of eradicating it and stopping it spreading, you need to spot it as soon as possible. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase surveillance, both in a casual way and a structured way, and I'll come on to that a bit more. There's only you know, a handful or a few handfuls of tree health pathologists and you know, tree health officers in the UK. And given the scale of the problem, there is no way they can sort of undertake the surveillance required on their own. So this is where the citizen science comes in. We just need more people out there looking. If they're looking, they need to report it. They need to know who to tell if they do see something. And then the next part is, if you get all these extra reports in, how do you sort through them? How do you work out which ones of those are the most significant so you can focus your resources? And also, we're focusing on the highest priority tree pests and diseases, which, I'll, again, I'll come on to and define. And we're looking, it's a European funded project, so we've got a, obviously got a European element in there to see what else is going on across the rest of Europe related to this. So, increasing surveillance and reporting. Observatory has sort of two strands of citizen science in it. The first is this increasing the eyes and ears on the ground. We need people looking for these new, new tree pests and diseases. We need to get that message out there that if you do see something unusual, please report it. Um, now, the tool we're using for reporting is something called TreeAlert. You may be aware there's a tool out there already called TreeAlert. It was introduced by the Forestry Commission um, during the Kalara ash dieback outbreak in 2012. Um, it was produced in a huge hurry in response to that crisis. Um, and that is the tool that we will be asking people to use. That will become the the single place in the UK to report any tree pest or disease um, occurrences. That includes the Forestry Commission staff. This isn't just about the general public. That is the tool that will be used for reporting from now on. However, the tool is currently being completely redeveloped. So as I mentioned, it was produced in a crisis. It was produced very quickly, and it did what it needed to do at that time. However, um, <laughs> The data that's coming in wasn't really good enough quality. We had a problem of huge amounts of data coming in, but of fairly low quality. So it was taking an awful lot of resource just to sort through that mountain of low quality data to find the fairly low number of reports of tree pests and diseases that were really significant. So this is where um, observatory comes in. So um, the, the the tool is currently being the, the online tool is currently being completely redeveloped and. It's asking, we're trying to improve the data quality. 
So um, there's a tension here between the scientists who want to ask every single possible question um, and then the fact you're asking members of the public to complete this. And they're going to get bored halfway through if you know, you're asking them too many questions. So it's been a really interesting balancing act to try and work out, well, we need better quality data. We do need to ask more questions, but where do we draw the line? So we've had, a, we've had another go at this tool. Um, there'll be some promotion um, in the coming months once the new tool is released. Um, but we'll be mainly targeting this year, certainly, knowledgeable audiences. So again, we're aiming for high quality reports, reports from people who have spotted something unusual. The problem with the current tree alert is that we're getting reports in um, of things like ash keys on an ash tree. So, oh, the, the, tr the tree's horribly sick. It's got these brown things on it, and it, it's in fact ash keys. Um, so we are trying to get in more quality reports from people who really will notice when something is, is different. It, this isn't normal. And we're also, in this part of the citizen science, also hoping to do some training materials for these people. The there's possibly some uh, e-learning materials, some face-to-face -face training events, um, a lot of maybe some ID support, that kind of thing. And we're just working on all of that at the moment. So this first strand of citizen science is all about encouraging people to look out for pests and diseases and to use this tool to report it. The second strand of citizen science is we have 200 specialist volunteers that have been recruited by the Woodland Trust. They've been with us for over a year now. And what, well, I'll come on to what they're doing, but um, they, these are people who already have a really high level knowledge of at least tree ID, if not a bit of knowledge on pests and diseases. There's quite a commitment to this. We're expecting them to kind of join us and stick with us for the four years of the project, and they will get training as, that, as, that, as the project goes along um, to increase their knowledge. So on the one hand, you've got this kind of citizen science where anybody can have a look out for tree pests and diseases and report it, drop in, drop out. And then you've got this second layer of more, more um, specialized volunteers. So the first thing they're going to do, we've got about 20 desk-based volunteers. And what they're going to be doing is looking at all these tree alert reports that are going to be coming in and helping us sort through them and helping us respond to some of those as well. So, for example, if we're getting reports and um, it's something fairly common to guard, and we can start using these volunteers to kind of take some of the slack off the handful of sort of professional diagnosticians at Forest Research to reply to the tree alert reporters and say, thank you very much for your report. It was, you know, it was, it was just amylary. It was something quite, you know, quite common. We're not too worried about it. The rest of the 100, 180 volunteers will be out doing survey work. Um, last year, they started doing survey work on National Trust and Woodland Trust sites, general tree health monitoring. They adopt one or more local sites, and they go back to those sites regularly over time and start to get to know them, and then they'll be able to spot again when something's unusual, something's changing. This year, um, this month hopefully, um, they will start following up some of these tree alert reports we've got coming in. So sometimes a report will come in and it's something of you know, statutory significance. The Forestry Commission are legally obliged to go and look at those ones, the ones that are definitely something really worrying. The volunteers will go out and look at those ones where we're like, we're not sure something's going on, but it would be really good to have some more information. It really gives us so much more um, ability to follow up these reports and be sure we're not missing anything. We've got lots of other ideas as well for how we could use the volunteers in the future, but we're taking a step-by-step -step process because we don't know yet um, how much time they're going to have, how much resource they're going to have, how many tree alert reports they're going to have to follow up. We've got lots of other ideas over the course of the project to develop this concept of using volunteers to survey for tree health early warning. Okay, so um, I mentioned the fact we're focusing on certain pests and diseases. This is our list of 20. Um, obviously, we've picked pests and diseases that we are most worried about, well, what we think are most likely to arrive here. They're going to have the biggest impact when they do get here. But there's another sort of factor to consider is can you, re can you reliably train a volunteer to recognize it in a relatively short amount of time? Um, there are things which are already here, um, like uh, Calara or Odothus drum and Needlebright, that we are trying to monitor the spread of. And there are also things that aren't here yet. We can't have a pure tree health early warning system based only on things that aren't here yet because the volunteers would never actually find anything and they would constantly feel like they were sort of failing. So, um, and it's perfectly legitimate um, to, to, to monitor things like cholera. We really do need to do that as well. It's not just about the volunteers' motivation. Um, citizen science is quite popular at the minute. It's quite a lot, quite a lot going on. 
and we're working very closely with a lot of the other tree health projects that are out there. We've created a little, um, not, not just observatory, but all of the projects working together have created a tree health citizen science network. If any of you are involved in that kind of thing, please do give me a shout and I can let you know about that. And we are also heavily involved with the various strategic uh, tree health groups that are there. We let them know what's going on and they, they feed into us. Okay. Um, so one of the other things the project has done is um, there is there's quite a lot of good information out there on tree health, but it's all over the place. It can be quite hard to find what you're looking for. Um, so what we've done is we've created a fairly basic catalogue just to help structure some of the information. We aren't creating new resources here, we're just helping structure what's already out there. So if people are interested in Colara, what about it, Colara are you interested in? Is it, is it the management? Is it the latest research? Is it policy? And they'll just help you drill down and find exactly what you're looking for. This isn't aimed at scientists and researchers. This is aimed more at the general, at the general public and the sort of knowledgeable audiences. Okay. And uh, finally, the other major package of work we're doing is finding out what else is going on in Europe that's like this. Um, uh, Ferrer have led on a survey to find out what else is going on across, across Europe, and there isn't a huge amount, but it seems that people are very interested in this concept. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out a bit more detail about what is going on and start developing some best practice, what's working, what isn't working, and start sharing that. So finally, just on communications, to wrap up, and um, we do have a project website. If you are interested in finding out any more, keeping in touch with us, then do please sign up for our e-newsletter. And there'll be a bit of publicity going out um, following all of the election things um, this, this summer, you know, to let everybody know what we're up to and start getting these messages out as well. So that's me.